Zamoretto pace setters Totten edge closer to glory. Find out why this former England international was at the Camrose. And it's crunch time as Winchester Football First fight for survival in the league. Welcome to Sports Week, I'm Kyra Lathwaite. With the season drawing to a close, fans at the Chesswood Stadium have promotion in their sights. Mikey Smith went down to AFC Totten to see if they can get another three points closer to the league title against Yate Town. AFC Totten hosted Yate. Yate Town on Saturday, with all eyes on Michael Gosney, who is rumoured to be being monitored by football league clubs, including championship side Millwall. And it wasn't long before the winger made an impact in this game, albeit in rather unusual circumstances his free kick deceiving everyone to open the scoring for the Stags. Totten looked hell-bent on continuing their 100% record since moving into the Tesla Stadium, and it wasn't long before Gosney made a more purposeful contribution. Headed away from danger, falls to Gosney! Second goal for Mike Gosney, second for Totten. Balls crossed in here, falls to Michael Charles with the header, 3-0 to the home team. <laughs> Substitute Nikhil Plummer finding the net with this deflected shot. But it was Totten whose attacks contained the most menace in the closing minutes. Sherborne combining with Davis, but his powerful shot failed to find the net. Home sweet home it would seem for Totten, the Stags having scored 14 goals in their first three games at the Testwood. In the Blue Square South, mid-table Basingstoke and Dartford faced off against each other at the Camrose, with both teams not realistically looking likely to be dragged into the relegation places. Gareth Messenger saw what was a thrilling encounter. Both Basingstoke and Dartford have played some impressive attacking football this season, so this game was expecting goals. And it wasn't long in the waiting on loan Delano Sam York opening and scoring after just 56 seconds for the Dragons. Sam York through. Exactly the start Frank Gray would have wanted Basingstoke on the front foot. A fantastic start, but it didn't take long for Dartford to hit back. Ryan Hayes' crack and strike beating keeper Che Morris three minutes later. The Dragons lead lasting just three minutes, a classy finish by the Dartford winger. The Darts brought a strong away following to Hampshire and again they were celebrating. Basingstoke's inability to clear their lines resulted in the Dartford goal, Danny Harris poking home. The home side almost hit back immediately, David Pratt's fierce drive palmed over by keeper Andrew Young. Frank Gray's side continued to press and got their reward. Sam York again with the finish to score his third goal in two games. Sam York into the box, he's round one, he's round two. The AFC Wimbledon Loney doubling his tally. What a great first half we've had here. The second half increased in tempo with more goals looking likely. Basingstoke almost taking advantage with this fantastic lob by Matt Pattinson, but Young's superb work denied him. Fellow keeper Morris was also called into action at the other end, but his quick reflexes kept the scores level. Pattinson again came close with this chance, but the frame of the goal kept the midfielder at bay. Off the post and straight back into the keeper's arms, the midfielder so close again to regaining the lead. Former Manchester United and England forward Teddy Sheringham was at the Camrose on Saturday to see his son Charlie and Sheringham almost sent the away fans into raptures with a powerful shot that went crashing into the crossbar. But just 40 seconds later, Basingstoke also hit the woodwork, Pratt's header rattling off the bar. However, the game did end on a sour note. 
Basingstoke defender Joe Dolan being sent off in the 89th minute for foul and abusive language during this Dartford chance. Dolan being given a talking to... Oh, and it's red! Dolan perplexed, but Basingstoke down to 10 here. The draw keeps both sides level on points in the middle of the Blue Square South table. Gareth Messenger, Winchester News Online. And I am now joined by Gareth, who is our Basingstoke correspondent. Well, it looks like it was a fantastic game at the weekend. It was, Cara, it really was. Uh, they're usually tight games at the cameras, but this one had an added excitement to it. It was, um, you know, a superb start, Sam York's goal in the first minute. And But Basingstoke, their defending has proven to be their downfall um, throughout the season. The tempo of the game never changed. You know, we had four goals, four times the woodwork was hit, and we even had a sending off, so it had it all on Saturday. Right, well, Basingstoke have not seemed to gain any sort of momentum this season. Why do you think Frank Gray's team has lacked consistency, shall we say? Yeah, they have lacked consistency. I mean, last weekend they were seven games um, without a win, but now they've got four points in their last two. Um, so there is that concern for form. However, they have had injuries. Robbie Rice has been out for a, a month and a half. He did come back on Saturday, though. Ross Adams, he's a kind of leader within the team. He's been missing since the Eastley game. But they've brought Joe Dolan back and uh, he's been superb. He's been absolutely quality for the side. Um, but with his suspension now, they will be missing him. So does the team, I mean, well, it looks like the team is building for the future. Will that be key for next season? Oh, it's going to be vital. It'll be absolutely mm. vital. The Dragons have a very young squad. Um, you know, most of their key players are in the, the early 20s, which is mm. unbelievable. One of these players is their top scorer, Greg Draper. He's got 16 goals and already a cap for New Zealand. That's, an, that's incredible at this, uh, at this level. Um, but he may be a target for bigger clubs in the summer, we don't know yet, but Frank Gray's experienced uh, and I think he knows what he's doing. What he'll do will benefit the club in the long run. All right, thanks Gareth. Right, well we can now go over to Amy to see how results have affected the tables. Thanks Cara. Well, there's been a great deal of change at the top of the Blue Square South table. Eastley's 1-0 win over Bishop Stortford at the weekend was not enough to prevent them dropping down to 7th after they drew 0-0 with Dartford last night. The Spitfires now lie one point off the playoffs with two games in hand, but is looking tight in the run-up to the end of the season with several teams still in contention for the playoffs. As we've just heard from Gareth, mid-table Basingstoke remain in 13th place after their two-all draw against Dartford on Saturday. Frank Gray's side looks set to have settled in mid-table. AFC Totten remain top of the Zamoretto South and West League after second-place Scholing failed to win against North Lee last night. Totten secured all six points from their game last two games, leaving them five points clear at the top. So plenty of potential for our non-league games going into the end of the season, Cara. Now away from league action, Winchester City looked to get closer to some silverware as they took on Hamble to try and bounce back from their Hampshire Senior Cup exit to Totten last week. Gareth went to find out if Winchester could get to their first final of the season. Winchester travelled to Totten to face Hamble Association on Tuesday night with a place in the Wessex League Cup final up for grabs. But Winchester was soon under the cosh after Simon Quirk's late challenge resulted in a straight red card. And it got worse for Winchester, Ashley Vickers finding space and slotting past keeper Rory Anderson. As the rain poured at Little Testwood Farm, Winchester went in search for an equaliser and got what they wanted, Zach Glassborn in hand to divert home. And surprisingly, 10-man Winchester took an unexpected lead from a Glassball corner. Despite uncertainties over the scorer, the goal was accredited to Glassball. It seemed Winchester had sealed their place in the final, but with just minutes remaining, Hamble hit back. Jamie Barron's wonderful finish taking the game into extra time. As players got tired, chances were limited, but Lewis Fenimore's fizzing strike was pushed onto the bar. After an extra 30 minutes, the teams were still tied, resulting in penalties. Hamble striker Jamie Musselwhite is missing his penalty and cutting a frustrated figure after. Mike Byrne confidently tucked his spot kick home before Lee Mills converted his. Matt Troon had to score to keep his side in the cup, but failed in doing so. Guy Butter's side progress and will face Bournemouth Poppies in the final. Gareth Messenger, Winchester News Online. Relegation threat and Winchester went into their game on Monday night knowing only a win will do to give them an outside chance of staying up this season. Opponents Exeter Thurs travelled to the parents on the back of a home draw against Winchester, which had ended their title hopes. And it was the home side who took the early initiative. 
James Knight curling Winchester into the lead after a neat exchange with Lewis Clarkson. Shortly after, Winchester doubled their lead. Josh Finch returning to the starting lineup after a back injury, heading home John Borgs in swinging corner. Winchester kept up the early pressure, and it wasn't long before James Knight grabbed his second. The little captain clearly relishing his new role as a centre forward. The goals here, his first two of the season. But there was more to come from the home side in the first half. A rather scrappy build up here, but Finch's powerful shot certainly wasn't. Finch clearly delighted with his second and couldn't resist sharing the moment with our camera. <laughs> And there was no let-up for the lacklustre Exeter side in the second half. Anderson Bancoli neatly tucking away his first goal in Winchester colours as the Winchester dominance continued. And Bancoli appeared to have enjoyed the experience of scoring and added his second just minutes later after some excellent play by Finch. This completed the scoring with a 6-0 result meaning Winchester still have a fighting chance of staying in the division going into the final game of the season. Mikey Smith for Winchester News Online. Now, as well as football, in recent weeks we have covered hockey, cricket and now something even more different. Amy Pickering went down to Southampton to meet members of a local karate club. Now, you may think that karate is all kung fu fighting, but I went down to Southampton to see what it's really all about. Karate do Shotokai is a form of martial arts that does not rely on the use of weapons, instead concentrating on timing, movement and flexibility. The club has seen numbers rise in recent years, a fact which leader Gavin Rothwell was quick to point out. Well, there's been a club at Southampton University for over 30 years now. Initially, when it was formed, it was one of the only clubs in the university. And uh, it started off with 20 or 30 members, and it grew and grew. Karate has three basic elements. Gavin demonstrates the Oizuki, Fumikomi, and the Kiyagi. Karate is certainly a sport that packs a punch. Amy Pickering, Manchester News Online. Well, that's all your sport for this week, but make sure you join us next week as all our local teams head towards the final stages of their seasons.